It's Ariel Hawani, and that's Israel Adesanya. The reigning defending UFC middleweight champion, the undisputed king, if you will. And Israel, we are here in exotic Bristol, Connecticut. Exotic, very, very. Have you ever been here before? No, nope, not yet. This couldn't be further away from Auckland, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know how far, but probably like 18 hours. Yeah, a long way from and home. And this is ESPN HQ. I'm out here, man. The campus that everyone talks about. It's the a big worldwide deal. Worldwide leader in sports. Like, that's all I've heard throughout all my life. So to be here, to be, this is cool. This is a little moment for me. It's so sort of a, a rite of passage. So I want to take you around. Okay. And then I actually have a big surprise for you as we Ooh. get to the cafeteria right all over right, here. All right, all right. Um, there's a lot of important people walking by, as you can mm -hmm. see. You can walk by, no problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, man, Dapper up. Hey, what's up, Jam? How are you, Zach? Nah, good. Good to meet you, man. Hey, this is one of our, success, thanks so much, our man. great Appreciate NFL that. analysts. Oh, for real? Yes, yes that's man. football. Man. Brother. I know yes, football. Not the fake Aussie Touchdown. stuff. Touchdown. You know, hey. The real American <laughs> stuff. Yeah, we won't really do it like that. That's right, yeah. That's the Heisman. That's the Heisman. But your winning dances, though, are definitely dances we see in the end zone. Hey, they ain't competing on my level, though. How about that? So you see a lot of famous people in here. Yeah, okay. This is the campus, ESPN celebrating its Beautiful. 40th year. Beautiful, even at night. Oh yeah. wow, I see that. And uh, oh, you shit. know, college football is a very big thing here, so yep. these are all the... Uh, the big teams. The big Where is um, Deontay Wilder from again? Deontay Wilder is from Alabama. Alabama, so they, but they're like one of the top teams, they're right? They're one of the top teams, yeah. yes, the I University of lot. Alabama. One of the fun things that you can actually do here is you can Ooh. pick your alma mater. So do you know what like alma what? mater means? And they'll play the song. What's the alma mater mean again? Alma mater means where you went to school. Oh, really? So okay. I went to one of these schools. I went to Syracuse, right Syracuse, over there. Eight. So they play the fight song. Every school has like a fight sure, song. like a band theme yes. music. Okay. Pretty cool, right? It sounds like Tom and Jerry. A little bit. Yeah. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> it's good. I've yeah. rocked out to this song before. Straight up. My man. <laughs> okay, so this is my favorite part of ESPN. This is the cafeteria mm -hmm. where they serve food. The hub, the typically. heart of the place. Yes, and uh, one of my favorite foods is something called matzo ball soup. Mm -hmm. Matzo ball soup, matzo ball soup. Yes, well sort of, that's more Italian. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's Jewish. Yes, it's Jewish. Okay. Have you ever had it? Nope. So I've been doing this thing where I've been trying to introduce people to matzo ball soup because for me, it's like, people say chicken soup for the soul. Yeah. Uh, our mutual friend, Action Bronson, yeah. called it Jewish ayahuasca. For real? He says it opens your mind. He calls it a PED. He okay. actually was in a street fight back in the day and said he had multiple soup beforehand and he felt like then he can actually go to battle. Oh, damn. So this might change everything for you. Dude, so yeah. I want to introduce you to it, okay. if you don't mind. So we have to grab our trays right over here. Trays? That's Ooh. cafeteria etiquette, right? It feels right? like we're in like, a movie. That's right. Oh, oh, you know, oh you thank you. Thank you, oh, sir. Yeah, okay, so this is the cafeteria. Uh, Where's the cool kids table? Cool kids table's in the back. Oh, we're about to go there. In the back of the bus. So they make. Yeah. This is Bristol, Connecticut, matzo right. ball soup. Okay. Only the finest. Only so the here finest. Here we go. Right, right over there. Here. Yeah. Okay, we have the sandwich as well. Yeah, we got the sandwich too. It's very, it's a, it's a very Jewish delicacy. Yes. Thank okay. you very much. What kind, is that this pastrami? Is a, it's a Reuben. Have you ever Reuben. heard of a Reuben before? I feel like I have. This I is feel incredible like right here, what we have here. Okay, it looks good. This is, they really... They're stepping it up. Yeah, is it for me? Chance. Oh, I mean, thanks you guys. You. Oh, appreciate Thank you that, very man. much. So this is up, a great honor. I, I once went to Katz's Deli with Rampage Jackson. Katz's. Uh, that's a legendary New York deli. Okay. And I introduced him to Matzo Ball Soup, and truth be told, he didn't love it. He didn't love it. He said okay. he didn't like the texture. Hmm. So it's I'm interesting. Hoping that your he didn't palate, like the texture. He didn't talk about taste. He talked about texture. Texture. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm hoping your palate is a little more um, refined. Yeah. See, we're all the way in the corner here. In the corner. See, cool kids. Cool kids. The, the corner. This is so exciting. Wow. I can't huh. believe I'm having Matzo Ball Soup with the reigning defending UFC middleweight champion. Did you say this is a nerd's table? No, no, no. Cool yeah. kids. Oh, okay, this? nerds. Oh, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> uh, I blew it. See what I did there? That was so exciting. What do you th First off, can you just tell me what you think of how it looks? I feel I like, like you're ready to go in. Yeah. You're See, excited. I'm salivating already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like the present? Is it a little funky? Like, like, that's a big ball in the middle there. I like the smell. It's like brothy. Yeah, chicken soup. Salivating. This ball, it feels like. Um, 
Oh, what's, I've had it before, like a what a, like a doughy. Hmm. I've seen it before. I've it's had kind it. of like a dumpling. Dumpling, but yeah. There's nothing actually in it. Like okay. it's not it's not hollow, but there's no like yeah. secret surprise in it. I've like had this before surprise. without the broth. Really? So I've had something the same texture as well. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, you, I'm just gonna use my your hands. Well, you're going straight with the hands. I've never no, done I'm it. Not this gonna, way. I'm not gonna oh. eat it. <laughs> Maybe I am. And I just broke off a piece. Okay, you're going straight like that. Wow. Oh, this is dope. Yeah, you like I've it? I've had this before. You have? Not, not matzo ball soup, but I've had that texture before. Certainly not in Nigeria. No, no, no. Where did I have it? In America. It was like a dumpling. Oh, it'll come back to me. So let's see, here you go. Here's the first official. Mm, this is good. You like it? On a cold night, Christmas, yeah. by the fireplace, this would be dope. Sure. Yeah. So what so do you think the If you leave, leave this out for Santa Claus, he'll love it. Yeah, it's kind of... Interesting that you say that since mm. he's it's a not, Christmas. Yeah, but no, no, because Jewish people don't celebrate oh, it's Christmas. Christmas. Um, but I, I appreciate that you did Hanukkah? that. You, yes. Yeah. Well, actually, it's Passover is the the holiday. That's though. the one. That's is that the one with the blood on the wall? Wow. Yeah. Look at so you. So that way you don't get your firstborn killed. How do you know that? They I grew passed up in over. Sunday school. That's yeah. right. You know, I know well, the stories. Your name is vibes. Israel. It is. Were you named after the? Uh, the That's state? a no, not the state. No, um, yeah, the state of the people. Yeah, really, Israelites. Yeah, because I mean. In my culture, when you have a baby, you, you wait three or seven days to get to know the baby first, and then you have a naming ceremony, and then whatever the beliefs, if, if you're Muslim or Christian, the, the leader, the pastor will um, bestow a Christian name on the baby, so Israel is my Christian name, and then key members in your family, like your mom's parents, your dad's parents, you know, maybe your mom's favorite auntie or something, they'll give you a name. So I have Israel, Mobolaji, Timitayo, Oduanyo, Luafemi, Olabi, Adesonya. Wow. That's all my names. And I, I mentioned it in the, after the Brunson fight. No, no, after the Tavares fight, when I was speaking in Yoruba. Yeah. Yeah, but no one really picked that up. But yeah, I just let them know. In the I was. cage, you did it. Yeah, I did. I yeah. post mic um, with um, Homeway uh, on, the, on the mic. I can't remember now. Jimmy Smith. Jimmy, yeah, yeah. my man. And uh, mm. how many names total is that? Seven. Seven. Including my last name. This is dope. You love it. Wow. I feel like I want to dip that in this. But the I like Reuben. the fact, yeah. I like the fact this is kind of just marinating in it, like it's soaking up all the flavor. Yeah. This is beautiful. You love Rampage, it. Rampage, what's your problem, man? I'll give it out of 10. If he gave it like a, I'll say he gave it like a five. I'll give it an eight. Really? Okay. Are you a harsh food critic? Or are you kind of easy harsh. to please? Nah. Yeah, I'm relatively easy to please, but if something I don't like, I'll just, I don't like. I'll right. tell you right out. But this is nice. Do you, this think is nice. it, do you think it's possible to get this in Nigeria? Probably, yeah. You think we so? Have, do we have anything similar? I like the presentation. It looks like something you could have in Nigeria, like eba or fufu or amala, and then you eat it with um, a stew. So sometimes you'd have, say, the stew here, and you have the the swallow, they call it, the the dough. So eba, you grab it with your hand, dip it in it, and then wow. eat it. Yeah. So it kind of reminds me a little bit of that with the presentation. But I like the fact that the... Um, the dumpling just kind of so soaks in there and marinates like a, like a spa. Yeah, yeah. So it's filled with flavor. If you were to <clears throat> invite me to like a traditional Nigerian mm -hmm. meal, mm -hmm. what are the must-haves? Jollof rice for you, definitely. See, the problem is we so we have our, our independence day on October first. Oh. And in New Zealand we have celebrations, or so whenever we have like a, a Nigerian celebration, like someone's birthday or stuff like that. A lot of um, people get invited, you know, like um, they'll invite their work colleagues and stuff. And they f up sometimes by mixing the wrong things with the wrong things. So now, we've made that mistake before at, at, at an event. So now you have to have like sections and, and inform them like the jollof rice does not go with the the amala, you know, because it doesn't really work together. Okay. You have, yeah, so you have to kind of understand the culture of the food. So now they, you have someone at the at the table to advise them on what to eat. Yeah. And jello fries? Jo it's, it's called. So think of a jaw of rice. Oh. Yeah, so a jaw of rice, jaw of rice. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And, and what is it? It's like orange rice. And okay. It's like the famous, and a lot of, in, uh, in West Africa, a lot of countries try and claim it, but we, we make the best. Okay. There's the Ghanaian, the Sudanese, and all those people, yeah, it's like, no, no, they don't. We Nigerians started jaw of rice. Okay. Oh, yeah, look at that. When you slurp, that means you like it. Gotta let them know. I do this in restaurants. I'm that guy that licks the plate. Really? At the end, and the people are like, you yeah, uncultured swine or whatever. But 
I eat with my hands as well, but you gotta have a relationship with your food, I feel. These kind of take it away. Okay. So I'd rather just if you'd, you'd rather get rid of it, please. I want you to do it the way you do Thank it. You so wow, much. look at this. It's so much nicer. Wow, look at that. That is amazing. And you really I mean God gave us utensils. This kind of takes it away, blocks it. And even like when we eat things like this in Nigeria, you have a, a water basin that you used to wash your hands first. I already did. I was talking about um what was I talking about before? When you return. So I went back, right? I told my dad, I just want to like low key go in the country, kick it, no beef, no like fanatics, all that kind of stuff. And he said, no, it won't be possible because they know you over there. Mm. And he was right. From the airport, people were recognizing me, some of the police officers. And I, I had my own security team outside. And some of the area boys, some of the gangsters, they already like, oh my, this man, like, Israel. And then they just show love, say what's up, take pictures. And yeah, for me, it was just. Like surprising, like I didn't think it'd be like that straight away. So if that's what it was like then, next time I go, I know it's gonna be even like not worse, but it's gonna be even more prominent. Like my my presence is gonna be known places. I went back to my old school and I shut the whole place down. That like wherever I went, I was shutting places down sometimes. Wow. So next this time this is post Gaslam, right? Yeah, post Gaslam. Yeah. So and then Kamara takes care of Kobe, and then. I think I'll probably go after my next fight. I take care of whoever, mm. and then, yeah, it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be crazy going back home. Is there a chance it happens in 2020? UFC Africa? What do you think? Possibly. You think so? Mm, possibly. Where would it be? I'm thinking Morocco, or somewhere in Nigeria or South Africa. It's possible. Okay. But it's just the Why logistics. Morocco? Morocco. They have arenas there. I'm sure they have um, venues. I'm yeah. sure they have venues. Um, Kusman just went there, met the prince uh, with, um, he was with, uh, I think, Sahudo. Yeah. So he told me some things. Okay, all right. But yeah, he well, said it's a beautiful spot, beautiful yeah. place, yeah. Like, very beautiful. I haven't been, but I'd love to. Mm. I'm getting such joy out of seeing you eat it. It's beautiful, like this. man. I'm not. Is it normal? No, it's good. I mean, <laughs> you're giving it your own little, like, I'm 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 very like oh, here's my spoon. Yeah, <laughs> you're doing it. So this, this is called a Reuben. Have you ever had a Reuben before? It feels like I have. It looks like I have, and I'm pretty sure I have. But it's this something is like this right here. It's like a deli meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. But yeah. There's some, you know, there's dressing in there. There's some cheese. I love the smell. It reminds me of something. The sauce reminds me of something. It's tingling my brain, my my third eye right now. See when we. When we ask you to come to Bristol, yeah. it's a little far away, but we'll, we'll treat hey, you right. Hey, you know you gotta what I mean? look after me, man. I'm going back to light heavyweight. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I wonder if we'll be there. Mm. Mm. What do you think? It's good? Mm. Feels good. Long day. Mouthgasm. Yeah, yeah, mouth. <laughs> oh my God. I'm arriving. Oh, it just breaks off, like it separates it from itself. I like the kimchi, or the, not kimchi, the lettuce. Yeah. I think it's a, a little bit of sauerkraut. Mm, sauerkraut. Yeah. yeah. Think you could get that in Nigeria or New well, Zealand? Maybe not Nigeria, but New Zealand, the meat, yeah. And sauerkraut, I'm sure someone makes it, but it's not something that's part of the, the food group over there. But sure. this, yeah. No, oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, you enjoying it? I'm going to have some too. If I was in high school and for lunch, this would be nice. If, what, I wish we had lunches like this, man, when I was in school. Do I do you identify more with New Zealand at the, mm -hmm. or is it both down the middle? What do you mean? Like, like, well, oh me, I what, depends anyway. Even people from Alaska, if they f with me heavy, I f with them back. Like, okay. I don't, I'm not, I'm not a guy who's very patriotic, and I like you see me, I don't walk out with a flag, right, or anything like that. I just, I don't like to. What's the word? I don't like to do that, cause you know, cause I'm look at me, I'm black. People know I'm definitely not born in New Zealand. And my bloodline, my war, my ancestors from Nigeria. But New Zealand, there was a point when I was driving from Auckland to Wanganui in 2011, going New Year's, going into 2011. I was driving back to my parents' house. I was riding in my, not McLaren, old beat up car called Chewy. And I was going down the country roads, the para paras, excuse me, whoo. And there was, there was a moment that, that year, that day, I realized this is where I'm gonna stay. This is where I'm gonna be for the rest of my life. Cause I always thought I was gonna end up in the States or I was gonna end up in Canada or somewhere like that. But then that trip just made me realize how beautiful the country was. And I decided like, wow. this is where I'm gonna stay forever. Yeah. What about when you were in China? 
trying to, that's more of like a, this is the best analogy I used when LeBron was playing for the Heat, right? Mm -hmm. Then he went back to Cleveland mm -hmm. and now he's with the Lakers. So coming up, and they know this, a lot of the Kiwi promoters, they wouldn't give me that that shine. They were giving it to like Joseph Parker and, you know, rugby guys trying to make it into boxing, you know, that kind of stuff. And I'm like, do you guys see what I'm doing? I'm people up, you know, I'm doing it in style and no one's backing me. And there was even one press conference, I remember um, I fought um, as a co-main co event for one of Joseph, Joseph Parker's fights. And there was a press conference and everyone sat there. I don't even know why we were there. And I remember this because it was the Liga 40th anniversary fight night, I think. And yeah, Joseph was the headline. I was the co-main event. And there was a press conference and literally every question was directed at Joseph. Wow. And I was just sitting there. Nothing against him, don't get me wrong. This is just the press I'm talking about. Every question was directed against uh, at the main event. And then Lola was trying to tell people like, you know, this guy, Israel, you know, he's uh, the next one after Ray Seffo. Hold on, two seconds, I'll take this down. Um, this is all for evening training, I'm pretty sure. Yep. What do you mean? Normally when I'm in New Zealand, this is when I, oh, all right, really? cool, let's go to the gym. Wow. Yeah, um, excuse me, so all the questions were directed at him. And I was sitting there just like, not stewing, but I was just like, what are we even doing here? I could have been, because then I had to go back home and I was going to be, be in traffic, excuse me. <laughs> Gotta wash it down. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. And then, I, in that moment, I decided like, one day, they'll know. They'll know. I remember that moment, and I did well in the fight. I f***ed the dude up, and Joseph also knocked this guy out in the first round. Oh, there was a pullout. That's right, I remember. And Terry took the fight. But still knocked him out in the first round, did well, but I, f I felt like I stole the show. And, yeah, they didn't back me the way they should have. So what do I do? I go where the money is. And the Chinese brought me over as a journeyman for wow. their guys to beat up on, because obviously they want to promote their guys, but then that didn't work too well for them, because I ain't no and I beat up all the guys and decided, all right, I spoke the language a little bit. I was immersed in the culture. The people loved me over there. So they were like, you know what? Let's bring this guy on our team. Because whenever they had a show, it was Team China versus everybody else. So they gave me a name, you know, for sure, uh, Hei Long. That means the Black Dragon. Wow. And they kind of just like put this narrative behind me for the Chinese people to back me up. And I still have a lot of Chinese fans, trust me. Hey, what I Zhongwo. And- What does that mean? Uh, I love China. Okay. Yeah, or oh, Hawaii. Well, I love you guys. But um, yeah, so it was just me pretty much going to the Lakers. That's how I see it, because they will pay me and they will give me attention. And then after I jumped to the UFC, a lot of the same promoters from New Zealand, they started trying to get close and associate and talk to Mike Ango about, oh, we would like to, you know, we can give Israel, you know, 50,000 to da 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 for six months. And I was just like, huh? Like, nah. You snooze, you lose. You had your chance. But it was a good time there. I enjoyed my time in China. It was a, like, it's something you can't buy, experience. I said, I fought over 20 times in one year. And that's not a joke. And people think, oh, yeah, he was just fighting some bums. It's like, no. I fought Philip Van Linden. I fought Simon Marcus. I fought, um, what's his name? Guo Chang, one of your best fighters. I fought him. I was trying to get Fang Bian. He's one of the, <laughs> the guys that I called him out for years. He never wanted to fight me. So apparently he's retired now. He's going towards MMA. But, Why you know, did you go towards MMA? Because I want to be the best fighter in the world. All these people who are saying, let me have another bite. Sure, sure, let me sure. Try this real quick. Oh, oh. yeah, that's a good one. I, I don't know if this is, maybe this is groundbreaking. This is, I think, groundbreaking right here. No one has yeah. ever dipped a Reuben in matzo ball soup. I'm doing that on all levels, mm -hmm, man. Mm hmm. Mm. That's all right, but I think they're better separate. Mm. For me, anyway. So, question again. Eventually, why did you decide to go to MMA? See Canelo's last fight? Yes. And after that, you know, he did something really amazing. Four-time world champion. Beautiful. People now, oh, bro, he's the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Fighter. That bothers you. Mayweather have been saying it for years. Everyone's been saying it for years. Even like the jiu-jitsu guys, like the best pound-for-pound -pound boxer. Mm. If you want to fight, I could have done the same thing. I could have done boxing and do the blueprint. You know, fight some journeymen, some bums. Fight like a local champion, climb the ranks. Fight like, you know, Australasian or Oceania champion, climb the ranks, you know. 
the, the blueprint. Build your record up, fight some world champion, get a, get a belt. Or do it in kickboxing. I could have done that, but I know in my heart, you know, I know in my soul that if I faced up against a guy on a different style, judo guy or jujitsu guys in the streets, you know, who's going to break it up when we win a clinch? Who's going to go, not break, break, mm -hmm. step back. Who's going to, who, if someone leg kicks me and I don't know how to check a leg kick, what's going to happen? So I just, for me, I never want to feel vulnerable in any situation. I never want to feel like any man can checkmate me in any position. So I had to humble myself and go back to the drawing board and, and, and learn and really study and, and hone the craft of fighting in all aspects. Like, people haven't even seen my ground game yet. It's like, hints and bits and pieces of it, but you haven't even seen my top game. Khabib ain't the only one who can maul people. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Do you feel like now, finally, like, I know one of the big things was people didn't respect you. Uh, wait till he fights this guy. I'm wait still all hype, bro. I'm still all hype. Has that quieted yeah. down, though, or do you nah. still get it? You still get it? I don't know if I still get it, but I still think they you have still to tell that yourself way. that? I don't know if I have to tell myself that, but I still think they think I'm all hype. And I'm, I'm okay with that. I like hype. That's why my, my, my merch on Engage for this fight was just a big me and my stance and hype. Mm. That's why the track I came to was called Hype to Hype. I've been about hype. Hype has been a part of my journey, like not just through dan um, dancing or fighting, just through life. And yeah, I enjoy it. So they can still think I'm hype and they can still think I'm, you know, oh, this is the next guy. Because they've been saying that since, since the Brad Tavares fight, really. They've been, oh, okay, nah, he can't take Brad. <laughs> Schooled him for five rounds. Five nil. Shout out. Oh, Brunson, nah. It's going to take him down, f him up, submit him. First round knockout. Cool. Silva, nah, he's too crafty for him. Well, maybe that one goes on, oh, nah, Silva's old. But we did what we did. It was a movie. It was beautiful. It was the passion of the torch. And... He survived that fight. Kelvin was supposed to knock me out, was supposed to finish me. He hits hard. How's he gonna knock him out? How am I gonna you know, get him? I did what I did. I him up. Him in the fifth round, I almost buried him. Robert, he went, do you know he went 10 rounds with Romero? <laughs> <laughs> you know that? Yeah. 10 rounds with Romero. Oh my God. <laughs> I said that at the press conference. You don't need 10, you need five, four, three, two. I did it in two. So now that's everyone's, oh, no, no, Paulo is too, he's too muscly. I don't know what they're saying now. He's too, they just, they just waiting for me to lose, but pick a number, wait in line. Gonna be waiting a long time. It's a bummer that the, uh, the cost of fight, and just the dynamic between you two was just so You know great. one thing that fight reminded me of? McGregor Aldo. Mm. You know, there's only been one time other than that, in UFC history, two undefeated. Two undefeated, yeah, males. Yeah. Why did it remind you of Aldo McGregor? I'll say it after the fight. What? I know. I like Which to tease fight? you <laughs> when I fight him. That may never. Okay, happen you know what? Today, yeah. today, nah, it will happen. I think it will okay, happen. Okay. But today, I know how to push his buttons. He's such a meathead. I can push his buttons and make him do what I want him to do. Okay. And then I'll counter him. Like people. They were always used to my linear attacks. They didn't know about my lateral attacks, my hooks. And they thought, when I started countering Rob, they forget, that's what I started doing when I, when I first started kickboxing. I was a counter striker. So I went back to my roots, and I was just hitting him from all angles. Like, literally hitting him from all angles. Even when I was in the Matrix, caught him with an uppercut, you know? Yeah, so Paula is a, he's a guy that's a, he's a, he's a really aggressive bull, but I can be a matador. Hola. Is there a part of you that's bummed it's not happening because you enjoyed the challenge of messing with him and getting under his skin and all that? I would have done that in the mic and on the night. Yeah. So I'm not The dynamic out. between you two was so great. Perfect. It was yes. a movie. It was perfect. You know, the big Ivan yeah. Drago and this <laughs> nerd, you know? It would be perfect, man, but hey, it can still happen. Romero can still, ca he can still catch these hands. We also have dessert for you, by the way. Huh? We have dessert as well. Oh, dessert. Let's go. Look at this. Wow. Do you have any milk? I can get you some milk. Please, thank you, ma'am. Yeah. This is very traditional. Thank now, you, Red. Now, the, the introduction of milk into the meal is not traditional, but you're doing this your own, you know, your Freestyle. own. Freestyle. Freestyle bender. Do you know what rugelach is? <laughs> Say it again. Rugelach. Rugelach. This is rugelach. What's this one? This is kind of like a, a chocolate bread, if you will. Rugelach. 
and it's, Rick, this reminds it's, me of like a Kurdish. We might as well be treat. having Sabbath dinner here. Hey. This is like as traditional as it gets. Lachaim. Yes. What do you say back to Lachaim? Mm -hmm. Just Lachaim. Lachaim. Yes. <laughs> Double Action time. And I were talking about that. Mm. Mm. Isn't this amazing? Wow. It's amazing, man. It's the My best man. treatment I've gotten at ESPN since I, I came here. Thank you so here. much, man. Thank you for having me. Oh. Thank you for this. This is beautiful. It is a this pleasure. Is beautiful. <laughs> I used to watch this shit. I still do watch this shit. I keep saying this. I'm just a fan. Like, people forget, and I, I even like me being here this weekend watching the fights on New York. I'm like, man, this is cool. Like, I woke up, I watched the weigh-in video on fight day, and I just got hyped. And I was like, I, just grateful, like yeah, gratitude, yeah, yeah. like just being here in the position I'm in. And then I'm like right there in the front row, you know, met the rock, oh, you know? What was that like? It was cool. It was first real quick. Time? Yeah, first time, yeah. Okay. Cause you already hit, hit me up after my last fight. Yeah. Excuse me, but just, yeah, like a guy like that, Attitude Era, man. He used to crack me up on the mic, you know. What do you Talking say Talking about to you? the candy asses. He's a big fan. He loves what I'm doing, and I said the same thing back. Um, I didn't really get. I wanted another time. You know, we'll talk to him another time. I'm sure we'll link up on something in the future. But right. it was just he's a big man. He's a very big energy. Right. Yeah. And cool. Like yes. just very nice. Yeah. It was just. Like, those are the guys I used to watch growing up. They were the guys like my heroes, him, Stone Cold, John Cena, those kind of guys when I was really, when I, when I thought wrestling was real. Oh, really? Even it's then? still real with me, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> everything, it's amazing to me that everything uh, you say is like a meme. I know, right? How are you like that? How are you so in tune with everything? As I'm we with the culture. Everyone? You I'm are? with the culture, yeah. Cheers. L'chaim. L'chaim, yes. This is incredible. Mm. It's one of the great nights of my life right here. Mm. <laughs> Having this with... Yeah, you're the man, man. You're having, the man. Having this with you? It's Never amazing. change, Ariel. Thank you. I don't care what they say about you. Who says what? People. No, no. <laughs> with you, man. The haters. Well, all hype. All hype, baby. Mm. Greatest byproduct of your success or the options. inspiration, which is options. Mm. That's it. Options. Yeah, even like stuff like that, that covers a lot of bases because the option, sure. like, before 234, I remember my brother. Cause he was he lives with me. He's one of my flatmates. He was um one of my yeah. He was working like ridiculous hours, like 42, 50 hour weeks sometimes as a as a, when was a security guard. And I was seeing the work I was putting in just to like make sure he comes to fight. We can have a good time, pay for flights. So now I just pay for all my family's flights, like all of them. Wow. Yeah. Just and even this fight I paid for extras, like about eight extra people who. But just I do it cause I don't do it for the love or the likes. I do it for the love. I just do it because I want people who are really important to me to be there. And yeah, so just the option to do that, to be able to do that, is just a blessing. So I, I have to sit down and just pinch myself sometimes because I, I forget. Because it's all regular to me now, but I have to be grateful. So I, I practice gratitude and it's something you have to practice. I learned that recently, so I have to really practice that sometimes. I'm grateful for the position I'm in because a lot of people, yeah, they don't want to be in this position. I remember even my last job, I remember the day I quit, I remember the feeling, that was September 3rd, 2014. I never looked back. That was never your last back. job? My last job, the day I quit. And what I was it again? It was, uh, I was just number crunching, like metering, billing type okay. It was data entry. It was, uh, if, uh, not, some things aren't for me. Like, even some people, when I was in China, I met some, some couple of guys who literally just fought because it paid, and they were, they were good, good at it. And it paid the bills. They got good money for it, but they, they, some of them would have rather been musicians and other things, but they just fought because, you know, good money mm -hmm. for them anyway to live off and live in Thailand and just live like a king, you know, but they would rather be doing something else. And I feel like, well, that's sad because then you're not really setting your soul on fire, you know, you wake up and, oh, I got to go train, you know. Yeah, you got to really enjoy what you do, man. So that, so September 3rd of 2014 was the last time you ever had to report to a job. Mm -hmm. And now look at you. Mm -hmm. Almost exactly five years ago. Yeah, actually, I, I always remember the anniversary. Every every single, and I always make a post or a repost or something like that. Cause what led you to quit? I tried three times beforehand. I'll have a little sip first. Okay. Mm. It's beautiful, man. I'll wipe my hands. I tried three times beforehand and I failed. And most people would have like quit after that. Like, oh, I tried to quit this job and I never really got anywhere. But then eventually, 
one time I was talking again at the desk about how I'm going to leave one day, and I heard this guy behind me. He was a very, yeah, he's a very reserved person. He kind of sniggered, and I was like, what are you laughing at? He goes, well, Israel, you've, you've said that about a year ago. You've said that multiple times. And for me, I was like, so does that mean I'm going to just stop trying to escape this f***ing rat race? Oh, no, I failed. You better just stop. I'm going to be locked up here forever. Handcuffs, so I'm going to do something with it. But yeah, that kind of chip on my shoulder. Shit like that I remember, because I'm like, I remember a lot of things like that, because I'm like, how, who the f*** are you to tell me or assume how I should think about myself? I just knew this wasn't for me. If it was something that I enjoyed doing, something I love, that I had passion for, f yeah, I'd do it with all my heart, like I do with fighting. But this is what I wanted to do. I knew this is something I could be great at from fight number four. So I just knew, yeah, just keep going. No stopping me, just passion and the work. I put the work in. And even like, I, I didn't feel like, I didn't feel like I, I deserve a lot of things I have right now, to be honest. Why not? I don't know. Like you just said, a lot of people, much more deserving people at the gym. Much more, much, much more deserving people at the gym. Because they put the work in as well. And, but the thing is like, I may not deserve it, but I can earn it. Everything I have right now, I earned it. And no one can ever take that away from me. Deserve is a little bit subjective, but earned, fuck yeah, I earned this shit. Earned this life. L'chaim. L'chaim. Cheers, On that note, <laughs> you earned this meal as well, my friend. Mm. You're an inspiration. Oh, you yeah. really are. Don't make me cry. Mm. Take away, please. And we are lucky to have you in this sport. We're yeah. happy that you uh, you made the transition. Honestly, as, no, as someone who covers the sport, it's been so much fun just in the last year and a half watching you in oh. the UFC and seeing what you're doing and also manifesting everything, saying that you're going to do it and then doing it and Thank doing you. it with style oh. and just like disrupting you know, the norm. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing Thank from you. the walkouts to the, to the know, knockouts. Urinate, yes, Woo! that too. Walkouts Urinating in the knockouts. cage, just telling yeah. everyone. It's just a beautiful thing. So Nosebleeds and nosebleeds. My man. Well done. Thank you so much. Pleasure, brother. Israel Adesanya. Get mm. it right. Stop Israel, saying it. Israel Mobolaji Temitayo Oduanyo Luafemi. Adesanya, the last style vendor. Remember the name. And Lachayim. And Lachayim. We out here. We out here. We'll always remember our first matzo ball soup together. Yeah. Oh, more. This is history. This is history. This like things like that. With, and so that's iconic. This right here. This is iconic. Oh wow. Okay. Who would have thought? Thank you, Israel. I appreciate it. My man. Cut. And seen. Hello everyone, it's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus.